Hello and welcome to The Justice Factor. The National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa says it will take to the streets to oppose the implementation of the National Development Plan and alleges that the plan was, I quote, lifted from the Democratic Alliance's policy documents. Today we ask NUMSA leader Ivan Jim why this is an issue at all if people do get jobs. After that discussion, we'll name and shame our loser of the week. But first, we look at the week's top stories, and here to do that with me is Katie Katapodis, editor-in-chief of Eyewitness News, and Valdemar Pelser, newly appointed editor of Report Newspaper. Guys, welcome to the show. I have to tell you, yesterday the news breaks that Nelson Mandela is back in hospital, and I start tweeting it, and I think, oh dear, am I going to be accused of invading his privacy? I don't respect the family, and Meg Maharaj is going to be beating me up. How should we be handling this story in the light of the Oscar Pistorius, the madness that the international press, us, all of us were in that story? How is this going to play out, and how should we, how should we handle it? Justice, I think uh, government and GCIS and the presidency has accepted that each time that there's any development, however small and insignificant, there will be massive, massive attention. Mm -hmm. um, the press release yesterday came out after, after some questions were sent to Mr. Maharaj by, by Rapport and City Press. Mm -hmm. uh, we, heard, we had heard Friday night that the former president was in ICU. First, the report said that he was in his house because an ICU was set up in his house, but it appears he's been admitted to hospital in Victoria. But it's accepted now that the spotlight is on us. But hold on, that's what I, because you, t your newspaper tweeted this. And, and Katie, I want you to tell me this. Shouldn't it, shouldn't it have been incumbent on the presidency or whoever handles the PR to say the nation might get panicked by this? Let's get the information out and keep people satisfied mm. to some extent. Justice, I absolutely agree with you. I think it's incumbent on the presidency to keep us updated at all times. We saw what happened the last time Adiba was hospitalized. Mm. They didn't tell us which hospital he was in. Mac Maharaj says, oh, but we never confirmed he was at one mill. Yes, but the defense minister confirmed in front of the cameras mm. that he was at one military hospital. When eventually it emerged, he was at another hospital. They can't blame us then for getting upset mm. because I think it is, it is critical that if they want to avoid panic and this alarm that they talk about and the presidency is the only one who uses words like alarm mm. um, and then, panic and panic exactly right then I think they've got to keep us updated from the word go we too were hearing stories from Friday already mm. he's not doing well he's taken a turn for 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 the worse yet you need that to come from the presidency yeah. Yeah. suspicion well, is the friend of panic <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we must keep suspicion at bay. I mean, it's easy enough for something like this. We saw a few years ago when uh, when former President Mandela was hospitalized for the first time. There was pandemonium around the world, mm. and there were many people who tweeted that he had in fact passed away. Mm. Mm. And social media is not something that you can co that you can control. Yeah. Once once the horse is bolted, there's not much that you can do about it. Then it's damage control that we do not want. So a proactive approach to communicating this will inevitably be better. Mm. Um, and I do think some lessons have been learned, but to be reactive. I can I, can I have they be been good. learned? I mean, I, I look at yesterday and I think, wow, you know, you're telling the world that the man has gone in for a routine test on a Saturday afternoon and it emerges mm. that you actually were breaking that story. It's the same thing. KTO outfit broke the story that Nelson Mandela was not at one military hospital. And so, you know, it's it's almost as if waiting for waiting for the truth to come out by some other means via journalists mm. instead of, uh, of leading the story. You know, Justice, I must admit, I don't think the right lessons have been learned here. We saw the fiasco which took place at one military, um, mm. or rather at Mill Park Hospital when he was there a few years ago. Yeah. That was a terrible lesson for South Africa to learn, and so publicly. And unfortunately, we've been learning a, hor a lot of horrible lessons publicly um, in the past few weeks and months, since Marikana for that matter. Mm. And I'm not sure that the right lessons have been learned here because you need exactly as you say, Valdemar, that, that proactive approach to addressing this. Nelson Mandela does not belong to the ANC. He does not even belong just to South Africa. He belongs to the world. He is a world icon. Mm. And as soon as we come to accept this, the easier I think it'll be. And, and the more honestly, honestly uh, they should communicate. Mm. Both of you have been, have been I mean, your, your both report and your outfit have been fantastic on the Pistoria story. You've been breaking stories and so forth. What, what can the presidency, if it's going to handle the PR on this, what can they learn from the Pistorius experience, given that there was so much international media here? Well, Justice, I, mean, I, I, I would not argue that the Pistorius case is a case to be studied mm. um, or to be learned from, uh, mm -hmm. because Pistorius immediately t hired some of the top UK, United Kingdom-based 
yeah. PR people, uh, including a kind of tainted former editor, editor. of the Sun yeah, newspaper yeah. Yeah. to handle his affairs, yeah. which in the eyes of the South African public doesn't mm. win him many fans. Um, the family has now reclaimed the right mm. to handle communications on his behalf. But so there have been many, many uh, uh, um, PR uh, blunders from the Pisterias family, but from government, from all, all sorts of uh, uh, communities involved in the Pisterias case. Absolutely, but what they have tried to do is to seize the initiative each time, mm. which I guess is a good thing because it, they are relentlessly pushing his case. Mm. This week they applied for a review of his bail conditions, mm. and it's all an attempt to say that we are not accepting the fact uh, which South Africans imagine or some South Africans imagine he deserves. Mm -hmm. So that, I guess, is a good strategy, but to, 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 to vest um, the control over his public relations in another country, I don't think it's a good strategy. <laughs> where, where should, who should be speaking on behalf of the Mandela family, the South African government, the, the South African people? Who should be leading this? Is Meg Maharaj the right person to be doing this? I don't think he should be the only voice on the story. I definitely don't agree. I would have liked to have heard from the Surgeon General in mm -hmm. December. I would have liked to have an assurance from a medical authority mm -hmm. to stand up, call a press conference, call a daily briefing if you like. Mm -hmm. That'll also avoid uh, the, the cameras and the microphones and the journalists being camps outside mm -hmm. of, of hospital and of course outside of his house and home mm -hmm. but call a, uh, a, a press conference with the Surgeon General give us a solid and truthful update on how it is mm -hmm. and then in that way um, you you ensure that there isn't any panic yeah um, guys there's been uh, I mean the this uh, the Pisterias case the police brutality the Mido Masia case uh, and others surrounded the issues of rape in South Africa mm -hmm. how should South Africa's reputation nowadays, it seems as if I get calls every, every day now with some or other foreign media outlets saying, oh, what's happening with this or this? And it's all negative. How are we, how are we doing? How, are we, how do we deal with this? We're not doing very well, Justice, and one can mitigate a lot of the damage from, for, uh, from something like the Medium Masia case mm. if you react correctly. Mm. And we've seen a lot of public outrage to this case, for example, but we've not seen much political leadership. The Mi Minister of Police has been on honeymoon for quite a while now, mm -hmm. for an extended trip. It's quite must be going trip, very yes. well. And the Deputy Oops. Minister of Police, Maggie Sotu, has gone to New York for something unrelated to her, you know, mm. her mandate in government. Mm. So neither the Minister nor the Deputy Minister is here to show mm. uh, symbolically, you know, a commitment to fixing this problem, mm. uh, which leaves it again to the Daily Sun in this case, which put this uh, video on its website, mm. which went viral in the week after Oscar Pistorius, basically, and just terrible for mm. our image, in the same week as the Time magazine cover of Oscar Pistorius. Mm. And so there wasn't a, a coherent government response to show strong political leadership to say, even though it was not my personal responsibility to untie that guy from the bucky, um, as minister, I take responsibility mm. and I will resign. But we do not have a tradition of that. <laughs> I think you're too hopeful if you're hoping for a resignation. Katie, what, what, what would you add to this? What, what did you well, say? I think what I'd like to add, Justice, is that we need to take a really critical look at the South African police service in South mm. Africa. Because if there is a common thread between Marikana, mm. Oscar Pistorius, and if we look at the, the, the Hilton Boerter um, element of the, of the Oscar Pistoria case, and then Miro Mashia, I think the common link and the common thread there is the South African police service. And the criminal element or the possible criminal element that appears to be in some, you know, uh, among some members of the force. And I think that for me is a really important part that we need to get mm. to the bottom of. You know, Ria Piecha has got a job set out for her. She's almost in this position for one year now. And, and she's had a tough, tough time with all of these stories. Will she last? I mean, she comes after Becky, Becky Kelle and, uh, and uh, the, the last one before that went to jail. Is she going to last in this job given that, that you know, she said on the same day that Mido Masia was being buried that now, you know, the police are doing a good job and so forth after Marikana same kind of sentiment is she will she last I don't think so not unless she takes some really really uh, strong action and starts to to really take a stand justice mm. against some of these uh, some of these elements within the police force mm. I'd like to hear stronger words from her Justice, I, I think she'll last until the noise becomes too loud um, because in both the cases of the former police commissioners we saw a, a very high tolerance for for inaction mm. and in some cases even for uh, corruption and such in the police force mm. from the political leaders so I think she has a there's still a long road for her ahead uh, because there's no coherent public uh, campaign to get rid of her mm. and there was in the case of a predecessor mm. which only yielded something long down the line <laughs>
<laughs> Valdemar Pelsa, Katie Katopodis. I, I wish we could talk about Julius Malamas, Texas, Derek Kutsier, the SABC, Kenya and Kenyatta, Justin Bieber, my daughter. There's so much <laughs> happening in the world of news. <laughs> but thanks so much for coming through. It's been lovely. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. After the break, we ask Numsas Ivan Jim why Zolinzi Mavavi should not be fired by Kosatu. Stay with us.